from Grace Covenant Ministries. And this morning I want to share with you what the Holy Spirit has put on my heart to encourage you. First of all, I want to tell you that um, my heart's desire is to preach this gospel. This word in the Greek is eonkalion, means um, too good to be true news. And this is the news that establishes the heart with the love of the Father, the grace of Jesus Christ. And this is the, the message that change your beliefs concerning yourself, concerning other people, concerning God. And it has the power to transform you. Therefore, the gospel for me is um, my motive uh, by preaching the gospel is every door that open, I'm going in with this one thing that I focus on. And that is to see people liberated from religion, people being liberated from the law, this elementary principle of the world. If you are good, you are blessed. If you are bad, you are punished. And that's my heart's desire. And um, this, this gospel, this good news, as Paul says, the power unto salvation. That means it makes you whole as a human being. It has the power to set you free of any emotional instability that you have in your life. It has the power to um, set you free of sickness, set you free of guilt and condemnation. Uh, give you an absolute wonderful perspective or image of who God really is, your loving Father, who have, who have just the best thoughts for you and the best plan and destiny for your life. So the, the word that the Holy Spirit, what I want to share with you this week is, is what the Holy Spirit has dropped in my heart. And this, the, I was praying here in the week and this word came into my spirit and the word is comprehend. And we're going to look at that word and we're going to look at what withhold us to comprehend and what the real meaning of that word is. Um, so uh, I remember when we were children at school um, uh, uh, yeah, in South Africa, we grew up with a language, uh, Afrikaans language. We spoke Afrikaans. We were not really interested in English. Uh, I never did well in English. English was for me just not even I was not even interested in this language because we spoke Afrikaans and that is what is important and we study that language we speak that language it was our culture but cult, but life changed and things changed and God called us and and uh, I could not speak one word English 20 years ago so but we had to do English reading and my teacher my English teacher knew that there's no hope for me um, when it comes to um, the English language and uh, we had to do a comprehension test. That means you, 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 we read it and then we have to explain to them if we understand it. And uh, I failed in this bad. And he always used to say, you will never make it your own. The day when you can make it your own, this is the day that you will understand it. And I never made it, I never made it my own, the English language. I was basically forced to do this when God began to call me to other nations and even to this day the English language if you listen to me my sentence construction and tenses is all over the place but I believe that the gospel got the power still got the power and speak to your heart so the word comprehend in the Greek is katalambano and that word comprehend is such a powerful word and the message that I'm sharing with you today is from repentance to comprehension because many people repent uh, repent means um, in the Greek uh, is metanoia it, it, it means uh, to change your thinking when Jesus came on the scene in Mark uh, 1 15 we read where Jesus came on the scene and he said the time is fulfilled the kingdom of heaven is at hand repent and believe the gospel now, what Jesus was saying through that was um, change your mind. The kingdom has now arrived on the earth. The kingdom is at hand. That means you can touch the kingdom. The kingdom can be touched by you can be touched by the kingdom. Jesus had the kingdom in him. Anybody who touches him touch, by faith touches the kingdom. Anybody that he touches, it was the kingdom of God touching them. Touching them. And in this day and age, the kingdom... We are in the kingdom 
and the kingdom is in us. So we have to repent. That means we have to change our thinking from defeat in this world to a life where we reign in the kingdom of God in Christ Jesus. So repentance means to change your thinking, to change your mind. And that's why the Bible say in Romans 2 verse 4, the Bible say um, the goodness of God leads us to repentance. So that means when we begin to hear the good news and we begin to taste and see that the Lord is good. And when we begin to experience his goodness, it begins to change our thinking concerning him. And that is what is bringing repentance into our lives. Repentance is not um, like in the olden days, they preach a sin and they preach us how we have failed and how we have made mistakes and bring us under condemnation and guilt. And we respond to outer calls and we, that was, then they say, repent um, and you will be forgiven. And that was the old religious style. Then we had sorrow for our sins and we feel bad for the things that we have done wrong. And we thought that that was repentance, but that's not repentance. Repentance is actually coming to the understanding and the conclusion that God is good, that God is love, that God is ex he accepted us in the beloved Jesus Christ, that God wants the best for you. He's not mean. He's not angry. He loves you unconditionally. When we begin to see that, then we change our mind concerning God because we grew up uh, in, a, in, a, in a culture um, where we thought that that we have to live up to a standard so that God can accept us. We have to be holy enough for God to accept us. And we, th we, have, we have done lots of religious things to be accepted by God. So um, repentance basically means um, the Greek is metanoia. And that word means so the word metanoia exists of two words, meta and noia. Noia is from the word rooted in the word nous, which means knowledge or thinking. And meta means to bind together or to come in union. So, so metanoia means I come in union with my thinking, with God thinking. That's why you and Jesus, you become like-minded with God. That is what's so beautiful about Repentance. Repentance simply means you and God become like-minded. You begin to think like Him. You, you don't think according to the world anymore. You don't begin to think in the context of defeat anymore. But you begin to think the way that God thinks. We have the mind of Christ. That's what the Bible says. So there's so many people that begin to think. We, we change our thinking about God and we repent and we know we are forgiven and we know God is good and we know God is love. But this word comprehension, and I want to read it to you out of the, and I want to stand still this morning um, in Ephesians 3. If you have your Bible, you can turn with me in Ephesians 3 and I'm reading from verse 14 here. And, I'm, and it says here, um, for this reason, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height, and to know the love of God, which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us, to him be glory in the church by Jesus Christ to all generations forever and ever. I want to go back to verse 18, where he say that you may be able to comprehend with all the saints, what is the width and length and depth and height, and to know the love of God that passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now, what is interesting here, that word 
in the Greek kata lambano. Um, it, kata means to go after and lambano means to take hold of. So that word comprehension means to take hold of in the Greek. It actually means to make it your own. So we repent. We change our thinking and we begin to see God. We begin to get a complete different understanding through repentance who God is. We begin to discover God is good. He's our Papa Father. He loves us unconditionally. Um, he just had the best plan. We begin to get a new picture of God and we begin to think different um, when we repent. And that changes our thinking. And we become one in our thinking with God. And we begin to understand our identity. We begin to think different concerning ourselves. We don't see ourselves as unworthy anymore. Um, we don't see ourselves as condemned and guilty anymore. We begin to think, the thinking in our minds concerning ourselves change. In other words, you begin to see yourself righteous, innocent, holy in Christ Jesus, which comes through a free gift. You can't work for it. You can't establish yourself in it. He made you righteous. He made you innocent. He made you holy. Um, and you begin to see yourself in the image of God. And that's what changes everything. As he is, so we are in this world. First John 4, 17 says. So we begin to see in the mirror the picture of God. We see ourselves in him because we have been created in him. So we see ourselves as holy as he is, as perfect as he is, and how wonderful he is. We begin to see ourselves righteous in him. Now, what is interesting with the word comprehend, that means now the things that I see, the things that I hear, now I make it my own. I take hold of it. I cut a lambano. And this is what Paul is praying here for the Ephesians. And I want to first of all look at what is that? Because what God wants you to be, God wants you to be bold. He wants you to be confident to take hold of that which he has given you freely in Christ Jesus. So we see in, in uh, Romans chapter 8 from verse 31, we discover that uh, Paul say there, what shall we say of all these things If God is for us who can be against us? He did not spare his only begotten son, but gave him up for us all. How shall he not with him give us all things? Who is he who bring accusation against the act of God? It is Christ. Who is he who bring accusation against the elect of God? Um, it is Christ who justifies. Who is he who condemned? It is Christ who died and furthermore seated on the right hand of the Father interceding for us. What shall separate us from the love of God? So in that passage, he said that all things has been freely given to us in Christ Jesus. Paul don't stop there. Paul goes on and he addressed something that is really important. He throw it in there so that people, um, uh, because some people can maybe say, well, God has given all things to us freely in Christ Jesus, but I'm not good enough. I'm not living up to the standard. I don't qualify. That's why Paul goes on there and Paul say, who is you bringing accusation against the elect of God? It is God who justifies. So he say, there is no accusation in this world that can condemn you. You are not allowed to even self-condemn yourself. There is nothing in this world that can make you unworthy or that can make you disqualify you from the promises of God because God justify you. God sees you just as if you have never sinned. God have made you righteous. God has declared you innocent. Therefore, in God's eyes, you qualify through the finished work of Jesus Christ. And then he goes on and he say, who is you condemned? So Paul said, nobody can accuse and nobody can, uh, can condemn because of the finished work of Jesus Christ. And <clears throat> so many people cannot comprehend or catalambano uh, taking hold of what they have simply because of feelings of unworthiness, of guilt and condemnation. 
Now, I want to look at some other verses here this morning and show you something that is really interesting. And we want to deal with this uh, thing that will hold you so that you can um, begin to take hold of the things that God has give, freely given you. For instance, the first verses that I want you to join with me this morning is in... Um, um, if you go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, then Paul is talking here about the love of God. Because it's so important that you see the love of God. Um, because the love of God helps you to receive. But I'm reading from verse 9 and he says, For we know in part, we prophesy in part, but that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away. When I was a child, I spoke as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part that then I shall know just as I also am known. Now, what is important here um, is that many people take this specific verse and they connect it to the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, when the perfect has come. Now that sounds like it is confusing because um, that God has given the apostle, prophet, evangelist, teacher, pastor for the equipping of the saints, um, for the perfecting of the saints, the scriptures say, until we come to maturity. In Romans 10, 14, we read that, that the writer of Hebrews say that by one offering he has perfected those who are sanctified. So what happened here with the Corinthians? What is the problem? He says they think as, as a child. He says when I was a child, I spoke as a child, I understood as a child. I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. So the question we have to ask ourselves this morning here, what is a child in biblical context? That is really important. So if you go with me, and this is going to help you so much this morning. If you go with me to Galatians 4 this morning and we read from verse 1. Now he say, now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, does not differ at all from a slave, though he is master of all, but is under guardians and stewards until the time appointed by the father. Even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of time has come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. So, so what is interesting here, what is a child? A child does not differ from a slave, it says here. He says, when we were children, we were in bondage to the elements of the world. What is the elements of the law? He says, he make it very clear here. The bond woman. Um, he says, um, born under the law. Jesus came to redeem us from the law. So what have happened with the Corinthians is that they become children again. Paul was there. Paul preaches the gospel. He's saying if, in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, he say, I lay the foundation as a master builder by the grace of God. He said, I planted Apollos water. In chapter 1, he say that the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you, that you lack no gift, that you stand back for no gift. He actually reminded them in chapter 1 that they have been washed, that they have been sanctified, that they have been justified by the blood of Jesus Christ. Because in this church were so much problems. And what happened with them is, is that the law came in after Paul established them in grace. Someone else came, other teachers came, and they mix grace with law, bring confusion in them, and now a veil is on their hearts. And because of that, they see dumbly and they understand in part. And that's the problem. When, uh, when you begin to hear the law, you go, will fall into bondage. Bondage will be birthed, not in your spirit. Because your spirit is created in the image of God. He say, he say here in this passage in Galatians 4, He say, 
He say that the heir, as long as he is a child, does not differ from a slave. So he say he's an heir. But as long as he is a child, he does not differ from a slave. How, uh, how long is he a slave? A slave? He is, he's part of the inheritance. He have the inheritance. But now he is a child because he is influenced by the law. Bondage have come in him. And Jesus have come to redeem us from the law. So what happened with the, the Corinthians is that they become children again. They become uh, in Ephesians, excuse me, in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verses 1 down. He says that, that you are babies. You are baby Christians. You are in the flesh. You, you, you cannot uh, eat meat. You, you can only take milk. So they have went back from mature Christians. They went back to children because the law slipped in through teachings from legalistic teachers. It influenced their heart. It influenced their belief system. And to prove it to you, if we go to 2 Corinthians chapter 3 in your Bibles, if you turn with me in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, I want to read to you two verses there before I go into it. It says, But the ministry of death written and engraved on stones was glorious. Then verse 8, How much more will the ministry of the Spirit be more glorious? Now, um, verse 9 says, For if the ministry of condemnation had glory, the ministry of righteousness exceeds in much more glory. So here I want to say to you, the ministry and engraved on stones, what is that? That's the law. We know the law is written on stone. So when it's a ministry of death and it's a ministry of condemnation. So the ministry of the Spirit exceeds in much more glory and the ministry of of righteousness exceeds in much more glory. So we see opposites here. We see death, we see spirit, we see condemnation, and we see righteousness. And both of them have glory. Now, many people take that verses and say, um, Moses was shining of the glory and the people could not look into his face. Why couldn't they look into his face? That's the question you have to ask yourself. And if we study this passage, we use him as an illustration and say Moses had to hang a veil on his face so that the people do not have to, have to look steadily into the glory which was shining. Moses represents the law. The law have a glory. Here's what you need to understand. The law is holy. The law is perfect. But the problem of the law is the law cannot save you. The law can never help you. The law, law cannot establish you. The only thing that the law does, it points out your weaknesses. It makes you unworthy. It put out a standard there that me and you, it is impossible for us to live up to that standard. And even if you can live up to that standard, you will be a frustrated Christian. You will have no joy. You will be an annoyed Christian. So you are not living in joy. You are not living in peace. So it have a glory, but that glory that was coming from, from uh, uh, the word glory in the original Greek means view and opinion. So it have a view and opinion, the law, as it coming to you. The view and opinion that mean you get out of the law is, I'm not good enough. I'm a sinner. I, 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 does not, I do not qualify. That is what the law say to you. That's the view and opinion that comes from the law. The glory that is coming from Jesus Christ, the, 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 we read here in Ephesians uh, chapter 3, our first ver uh, passage that we read today. He say here, in this passage, he say, um, May he grant you out of the rich treasures of his glory to be strengthened and reinforced in the inner man uh, by the Holy Spirit, that Christ may dwell in your heart. So our spirit is created in the image of Christ. It is full of glory. But your heart is your belief system. What you believe in your heart is making things work. It, you automatically do what is in your heart. It is the faith machine. You will act on what you believe in your heart, either negative or positive. 
So if you hear the law, if the law comes to your heart, it gives a view and opinion in your heart and it tells you you're not good enough. It tells you you are disqualified. You are not living up to the standard. You do not deserve to be blessed. That's what the law say to you. So if that comes into your heart. You can be filled with the spirit in, in your spirit and be a new creation and uh, have the life of Christ in your spirit. But the heart is where you understand, where you comprehend. And when we teach us the law to you, then what happens is we establish your heart in the idea that you are not good enough. The, the understanding. Now your beliefs has changed and you understand or you think you are not good enough. You do not qualify. But the good news here is if we go on in 2 Corinthians 3, he says here, um, verse 15, but even to this day, when Moses is read, a veil lies on the heart. So that is what happened with the Corinthians. That's why Paul said, when I was a child, I think as a child. I speak as a child. I act as a child. So, it, so when Moses is read, then we, we return to, ch to children. We act as children. And um, uh, 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 what happened in, uh, then is, is that we see dumbly, and we understand only in part. Because a veil, you can see through the veil. But the problem is you don't have the full picture. You don't have the perfect picture. You only have a dumb picture. And you only understand in part. And that means Jesus is now basically in the shadows. You don't have the full picture of who you are in Christ. You have a distorted picture. And that is why James said that's a double-minded man. Um, he's like the wave of the sea, tossed back and forth. And if we go on here in verse 16, it says, Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and when the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. When one turns to the Lord, how do you turn to the Lord? Repentance. Change your thinking. When one turns, renew your mind. When you begin to think, you begin to understand Christ is in me. The Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is liberty. So, in other words, your thinking changes from, um, hey, I am being influenced by the law. I've become a slave to bondage in the flesh. That's not who I am. The gospel say Christ is in me. I find my identity in Christ. I find my life in Christ. He's dwelling in me. The Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So this is when liberty begins to take place. You are, will be liberated from the flesh, the law, and bondage. You will be liberated from thoughts of unworthiness, of guilt, of condemnation, accusation. You will turn from that. You will find your liberty in Christ because me and you, we identify with Him as our image, our only image, our only life in God, and it will bring liberation to us. And then he goes on here and he say, but we with unveiled face, with other words, when that veil is taken from the heart, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord. Where did we read about the mirror? 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Now we see dimly as in a mirror. Why did they see dimly? Because of a veil that came on the heart. They become children again. In the glory of the Lord and being transformed into the same image. So as we look into Christ in us, we begin to see Christ in us. We are transformed to that same image from glory to glory. So with other words, you are moving from the glory of the law, which have condemned you, tell you you are guilty, tell you you are not worthy, uh, accuses you, tell you you have not lived up to the standard. You move from that glory to the glory that is in Christ, which exceeds in much more glory. And what is interesting here is, is that the ministry of condemnation and glory, the ministry of righteousness or the ministry of innocence um, exceeds in much more glory. So condemn righteousness is the antidote for condemnation. So uh, uh, condemnation is the very thing that blocks you from... Um, blocks you from catalambando or to comprehend or taking hold of what you have in Christ Jesus. Now, 
what is interesting here is, let's ask the question, what is the meaning of the word condemnation? Condemnation, the word con means to be deceived. Damnation means a death sentence or a sentence to punishment. So of other words, when I go as a child of God, as a new creation, created in the image of Jesus Christ, if I have been influenced by teachings from the old covenant and the law, I have been deceived into punishment. So of other words, now my thinking is subtle in my mind and he tells me you don't deserve to be blessed because you fail to live up to the standard. You are not good enough. You don't deserve to be healed. You don't deserve to be financially prosperous. You don't deserve to have good friends. You don't have, deserve to have good relationships. You don't deserve to have abundance. That's what it says. You are now deceived because you are not good enough. But the good news is Jesus has made you good enough. He made you innocent. He made you righteous. He declared you righteous. Therefore, who can bring accusation against the elect of God? It is God who justified. Who is you condemned? It is Christ who died in your place. He became that unworthy poor, um, defeated person in your place on the cross. And he rose from the dead as one new man created in the image of God. And you are created in that same image. If you just believe as simple as that, just believe nothing more. Believe means I've been persuaded in my heart that what God say about me or what Jesus say about me, that is the truth. And that is so simple. Just to agree. Metanoia. Change your mind. Begin to think like Jesus thinks. I agree in my heart that I have it. Now, the next step is now to take hold of it. Once condemnation is removed from your heart, this is what happened. Turn with me in your Bible in 1 John. And we're going to read there. And I will show you what happened when condemnation is removed from your heart. If you go... So if you go with me to 1 John 3, and we are reading from verse um, 19. And by this we know that we are the truth, and shall assure our hearts before Him. For if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart, and knows all things. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence towards God and whatever we ask, we receive from Him because we keep His commandments and do the things that are pleasing in His sight. Now, first of all, that word commandments can throw you completely off. There's a whole teaching on it. I have a whole explanation on that in one of my teachings on YouTube. But that word commandments means actually in the original Greek under the new covenant, it means that I agree with the finished work of Jesus Christ. That's what it really means. It means it's something that's already done in the original Greek. It's not something that I'm going to go and do to get God to bless me. No, it is already done. That commandments is written in the same context. So the commandment is to believe that Jesus has already done it. Amen. So he says we can ask anything. So when condemnation is removed, we have confidence towards God. Isn't that beautiful? So now me and you can cut our lambano. We can comprehend. We can make it our own. We can now say, I have confidence towards my father. I'm worthy. I qualify. I'm not unworthy. I'm his child. I'm his beloved. I qualify for all the promises and I, make, I comprehend with all the saints to the width and length and depth and height. And I know the love of God that surpasses all understanding. And I'm filled with the fullness of God. And now I am in that position that I say, He is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that I can think or pray according to the power that works in me, that works in us. And that power that works in us is the love of God, is the Holy Spirit in us. And now we have confidence towards God. Condemnation is taken out of the way and we comprehend, we take hold, we make it our own. 
I'm a child of God. My father loves me unconditionally. I qualify for all the promises, not of anything that I've done, that I'm so good, that I've lived up to a standard. No, because of the grace of Jesus Christ, because of his divine favor, not because of anything that I've done. No, it's because of what he has done, because he loves me unconditionally. And now I'm free of condemnation. I'm not living under that deception that I don't deserve to be blessed. I don't deserve to be healed. I don't deserve to receive uh, the goodness of God and live under the blessing of God. No, I suddenly realize I qualify. That condemnation is removed from me. The last verse that I want to use, passage I want to use with you is in Mark 11, where Jesus say, if you do not doubt and you believe, you will say to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea. And whatever you ask, believe that you receive and you shall have what you believe. Now, what is interesting in that passage, that word doubt in the Greek there is uh, the word for, for condemnation is katakrino. And the word for doubt is diakrino. So do, the word doubt means to self-condemn. So Jesus said, if you do not self-condemn you, you will ask whatever you need and you shall believe that you have it and you shall receive it. Isn't that beautiful? So condemnation is your enemy. And Jesus say in, in, in John 16, we read, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall, have ever, shall not perish and have everlasting life. And then in the next verse, he say that the son of man did not come to condemn the world, but to save the world. So Jesus came to save you from condemnation, from self-condemnation, so that you can have confidence and katalambano, with other words, comprehend, take hold, make it your own, and live as a son of God in this world, glorifying God and living as a testimony, glorifying his name. So God bless you. That's what I wanted to share with you today. That was on my heart. I want to say to those of you who support our ministry, God bless you richly. Um, may there be fruit on your righteousness. Um, uh, um, I know that the Father increase, bring increase in your life, in, um, in salary, in um, promotion in your work, in business, uh, blessing just overflow in your life. And we greatly appreciate you supporting us to go out and preach this gospel to the nations and every door that opens. So if God put in your heart to support us financially, go to gracecovenant.ca. There is for people in, the, in Canada, there is a link so that they can uh, uh, make a donation. And also for those in the United States on the first page. Of our website there is a link for those in the United States to make donations for those who want uh, tax receipts so God I, we thank you greatly for supporting us and listening to us I believe that you are encouraged through this word so go out this week and thank the father and make it your own you are his child you deserve the best